what is good to my family in christ welcome back to my platform if, if this is your first time here i go by the name of stefan i don't think i've been saying my name in none of my other videos um but that's my name welcome to this platform the eternal reward uh is what my focus is is what our goal and our eyes should be set to because everything on this earth will perish as a believer in christ if you believe everything in that scripture that you are we are called to believe on him about the testimony of our lord and savior jesus christ the eternal word of god that shall never pass away until the heavens and the earth pass um we need to understand that that's where our vision is our focus is on the eternal reward not the rewards of this life you can have the rewards of this life but that'll all perish away one day so welcome back to my platform but if this is your first time here my name is stefan and today i am delivering the first message in a series of messages that um the lord is desiring me to teach on and i'm going to be revealing some understanding that may have others confused some things that i've never heard other people within the body of christ um speak on uh, or generationally heard of personally and some biblical mysteries that the lord has allowed me to understand that he will have me reveal in this message um so the glorious gods i could not have done any of this without the leading of his holy spirit so it's nothing that i can boast about amen um the lord speaks to me in quite a different in quite a few ways uh i just spoke that this message will be based on a dream as quite a bit of my other messages are the lord speaks to me more vividly and gives me more details uh through the dreams but i've had a handful of visions and uh one of the visions is about a year old at this point and it actually i didn't have the clear understanding of that vision at the time and i tried to understand it but um i just took parts from that and didn't really understand what the role that it would play in the lord's uh calling for my life his will for my life until more recently when i was digesting this message because i didn't think this message that is based on a dream from may that i'm delivering today was going to be this long and filled with this much information but that's what the lord had me understand as i was digesting it so um that vision was really just about um i was listening to the audio bible at the time i turned off the lights and i was just listening and i would say within the first five minutes or even less i started to, my eyes were closed i was not asleep and i started to see pages turn in a book i couldn't see the book but i could see the pages and then i could see the page number so i couldn't make out any of the letter the words but i could see the page numbers and then the page the pages stopped and i could see the page number and i thought maybe you know well, maybe that was the bible but i went into the other avenues strong's concordance um hebrew greek to try to understand and the lord as i was walking with the holy spirit then it was the lord was just letting me know like no that's not what i want you to take from that it's not exactly that either so it led me to an exact page in the bible which helped me understand part of um, my anointing from the lord to do what he has called me to do as a part of a chosen generation a chosen people and that kind of hints at what i'm going to be delivering in this message today uh some true biblical mysteries that i've heard um taught wrong before and just misunderstanding so take whatever i say to the lord if you don't want if you've heard contrary maybe you've heard from somebody that's been doing this longer than me uh god bless you that you even been seeking the lord that long but what you want is the truth pray about what i will deliver to you from the lord and leave it at that take from his truth do you want to be right because you like somebody more or you've known somebody doing this more or do you want the lord's approval i'm only doing what the lord has approved me to do I'm not in contest or battle with anybody else. The gospel is to be shared. Share this. Uh, all right. 
eat of it from yourself, take it back to the Lord for his approval. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to get into the dream because we're almost five minutes in. And as I said, this is a long message. So anytime that I do reference scripture in this message, it will be based on the Geneva Bible translation and and the God's word translation. The God's words trans God's word translation is a little bit more simple um, in its reading. And these are two translations that the Lord, by his Holy Spirit, has led me to understand he does approve of and will allow me to use. It's called me to use to help interpret and digest and present this scripture to those who will hear it and that it will be a blessing to. Um, I also have a message that I do. I've already dropped. If you want to go through some of my other videos, this video, that video is titled God Rebukes the King James Bible. And it actually edifies this message too so a lot of the previous videos uh before this one recent previous videos i say within this year will be edifying this message all right uh so with that being said let's get into the dream um it's based on a dream from may 15 2023 and i wrote the dream down at 509 a.m I was coming from Ruth Street. If you go back and check the last video that I dropped before this one, um, the thumbnail reads, the thumbnail has a, a photo of like four different seasons with one of them being a butterfly within those four photos. And I believe it's prophetic encouragement for the journey. Um, encouragement, uh, be aware, something like that to that extent. So check that out. It's going to tell you it, it speaks on these streets. So those same streets that are mentioned in that video, those that message kind of precedes this one as and it's going to help edify uh, what this one is about as well. So I was coming from Ruth Street as I was in that dream as well. And that that was a separate dream, a separate message. I was coming from Ruth Street and I came to the intersection of William Street and Malcolm Street. And at the address of one of these, the street on the, the house on the corner of these streets, that address of that house was 501. And there was a yard on this, uh, there was a yard, the yard of this address was piled with different things. Nothing was broken or looked old or worn. This pile extended from the corner of that from the corner of the street, but it was only in the yard. So nothing was in the street, but it extended from the corner and further back into the yard. So this entire front yard was just filled with a lot of like new items. I can't really describe what everything was, just everything was kind of like new and untouched, but it was all piled up, right? Um, the highest part of the pile came about to my shoulders. Uh, and as I looked at the pile for a while, like, what is this? I had a knowing in my spirit that the stuff that was here was laid up uh, was the things from the wicked or from sinners. That's going to play a part in this message, because with that understanding that the Holy Spirit gave me as I looked at this pile of things in the, uh, the yard, scripture, that scripture hit me in, within a few seconds of staring at that pile. As I'm standing there looking at the pile, I look to my left. And I uh, noticed that uh, there is further down on Malcolm Street in the middle of the block, there is a woman who is preaching in the middle of the street to a group of people. And the group of people are also in the middle of the street. And she was preaching to them about all the things that were available to them. That's what the woman is preaching to the people about. I was coming from, again, I was coming from Rue Street. And as I approached this corner and I stood there for a minute, I took in what I saw them doing. I started to grab items off of the, out of the corner of, from this yard. Like, um, I just started grabbing stuff and putting it in my, my arms and just carrying it. Right. Um, and I grabbed as much as I could. So as I'm doing this, the person, the lady who, the woman who was preaching, she had on a very nice tailored suit. Uh, it, I think it was brown, but it was like really nicely tailored. 
She looked at me as I started to grab all of this stuff. She kept talking to the group of people standing in uh, the group of people standing in front of her. I actually think they were seated, but either way, they were in front of her. She was standing, they were seated, and she could see me grabbing the things from the yard, and she kept she kept speaking, and the crowd kept listening to her. Um, I grabbed the stuff, and I walked further down William Street until I reached John Boulevard. Now, this is what's different from the last dream and message that I referenced a, a few minutes ago about uh, these streets being referenced in that last message of the uh, prophetic journey and encouragement with the thumbnail. In that dream, I go a certain direction in William on William Street um, that leads me to Carroll Street and to Clayton Street, but I took the opposite direction of William Street in this dream and that led me to John Boulevard. So there's a cycle of that route in the other dream. But in this dream, I actually take a different turn after I've grabbed all these things and I head to John Boulevard. So af after I get to John Boulevard, I make a turn. And after John Boulevard, I turn on Mont Street, M-O-N-T. After Mont Street, I take the items that I was carrying the whole way and I put them in the back of a, I store them in the back of a house or in, in the back, through the back entrance of a house, right? So it's more like a private entrance, but that's what I do with the, the items. I then start to, after I drop those items off, I take the same route back to the pile of items on the street. Now the house that I drop the items off, it's that house, the front of that house is Malcolm Street but I take the entrance to the back part of the house, the back entrance, a private entrance. I take that entrance from Mont Street. So Mont is actually like a cul-de-sac. So it doesn't actually run into Malcolm Street, but the way that it's set up, you can actually get to the houses, the, the backyards of the houses on Malcolm Street. So I, I essentially kind of came back to where I was without taking that same route. So I drop the items off and then I take the same route back. I go back down Mont Street. I take John Boulevard and then I head back up William to this corner where everything has been stored up. Right. But before I get to the corner after coming uh, before I get to that corner on my way back uh, to that intersection, I took notice that there was a pair of dogs that were walking um around this portion that I, of the neighborhood that i had been walking in so that portion of william and john boulevard and mont street i noticed that at one point i saw dogs to a pair of dogs walking side by side uh in this area particularly when i was on john boulevard they were in the distance but they yeah they were just walking by right so i took another uh as I got, after I noticed the dogs, I got back to the pile of items and I started to take more from the pile. As I, I realized that it wasn't a crime and I'm like, okay, I guess I can do this, right? There's, this is not a crime because I was just taking things freely. And what I noticed that, what I noticed was, excuse me, what I noticed was that I was one of very few people who had even received from there or even touched that pile, right? There was no one else there or there was no one taking anything, which I thought was kind of odd. So as I start to take this, I grab another armful of things in both of my arms and I began to head back down William Street to make this same route, right? Um, as I get about to the middle of the block of William, the two dogs that I noticed earlier were coming from the Mitchell property. And I referenced the name Mitchell in um, the, the video that I, the message that I shared about God rebukes the KJV Bible. So Mitchell again is playing another part. The understanding in the name is playing another, playing another role. As I said, all of these messages are connected. Whole totally different dream, but the, the Lord connected these messages, right? So 
the dogs are coming from the Mitchell property and I have an armful of the things from the corner just about to take them back to where I brought them the first time, right? I stored them the first time. The dogs walked as a pair up to me. So I just stopped because I wasn't sure what the move was. Like, I don't know what these dogs want, but yeah, I'm just gonna stand still. So as I stand there, unsure of what they were doing, but not fearful, the dogs looked very well groomed and both of the dogs had on a service vest. So I continue to stand there. One of the dogs is a golden retriever and the other dog was an Akita. These are the two, two breeds that the dog were. While carrying all of this stuff, carrying all of the stuff, the dogs began to sniff me very intently, like in, intensely. So I'm standing there and I could feel the dogs like sniffing my clothes and I could feel their nose rubbing up against me as they were just sniffing me really, really hard. So uh, they were doing this as if they uh, doing this as if to monitor me being in this area that they were patrolling. Like, what are you doing here in this area? They didn't approach me the first time as I saw them in a the distance, but this time they came directly up to me as they patrolled this area of the neighborhood. And as I'm standing there, um, after standing there while they sniffed me, I felt comfortable enough to reach out and pet the Akita, which I'm not sure how I did, but I guess I reached out with one arm. I remember my right hand and I petted the Akita who that was to my right and the golden tree retriever was to my left as they faced me. And uh, as I began to pet the Akita, she began to wag her tail and the golden retriever started to do the same. And I had the understanding that I was about to take the same route back to store these items up. And that was the end of the dream. So I'm going to go into the meaning of everything that I just described. And then I'm going to go into, into scripture and what the Lord is speaking through the things that he revealed and how I was being led in the dream. So I came at the begin. the dream begins with me coming from Ruth Street. Ruth, the name Ruth means faithful companion. I came to the corner of Malcolm and William Street. Malcolm means diligent servant, teachable spirit. William means resolute protector, noble spirit. To be a resolute, the word resolute means admirable, Admiral, let me get it out. Admirable, admirable. I got this. <laughs> admirably, that's close enough. Admirably, there we go. Admirably purposeful, determined, unwavering. Um, a noble spirit. To be noble means having and showing high moral principles, ideals, righteous, noble birth, royal, glorious. And we know that there is none righteous but God's righteousness. We can be self-righteous, but the only true righteousness is God's. All right. If you're a believer, that's what we come to understand. Self-righteousness can't do nothing for you. We can't save ourselves. So. Um, royal, king of king, lord of lords, glorious. Uh, that's the kind of, that's the spirit, noble spirit. So that's what William means. John Boulevard, the name John means God is gracious, strength of God. Mont, M-O-N-T, means from the mountain of the wealthy, prosperous. The golden retriever represent uh, the, the golden retriever and the Akita were both large breed dogs. The golden retriever represents loyalty, service, protection. They had on service vests. The Akita um, was historically used for guarding, so guarding, protection. Excuse me, fighting. 
they even use those dogs to hunt bears like you know so that's that's, that's something and it also represented loyalty. So they both of the dogs essentially represented similar attributes of one another, of the Lord, really. But we ain't gonna get too far into that just yet, all right? But even before we even get further into the, you know, into this message, uh, you can already see that the dogs did not mean anything demonic. So let's get into the message. The pile of things that I saw on the corner represented a good man, uh, represented Proverbs 13 and 22, which reads, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of a sinner is stored up for the righteous. So that's what the pile of things represented as I approached them. Now, how did I even get to understand that or be led to that pile of items? I was coming from Ruth Street, the faithful companion. Ruth, the, the understanding of this is that I was walking with the faithful companion. And that is going to be coming from John 14, chapter 14, verses 15 through 17 to help understand what the Lord is revealing and what he desires for everybody and how he was leading me with the faithful companion that set of scripture reads if you love me keep my commands and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you be with you forever the spirit of truth the world can't accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you so that does not mean he is in you he will be in you so the faithful companion was with me. Another set of scripture that edifies this um, is John 14, verse 26. But the helper, and I'm reading this from the Amplified Version, but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will help you remember everything I told you. So this is what me coming from Ruth Street, approaching that pile of things on the corner at the address of 501 represented, which that pile of items represent, represented an inheritance, Proverbs 13 and 22. And now we're going to jump over to uh, me standing on the corner of Malcolm and William. This is where the corner of, this is where the inheritance was laid. Um, me being on that corner, taking from that pile and deciding to head down William Street in a different direction than I did in the other dream that I referenced in, a, in the last video, that represented John chapter three, verse three and verses seven through eight. This is when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, who is a Jewish uh, teacher or leader who desires to understand what it is to be reborn of the spirit. We already, I just spoke on what the meaning of William Street is. So those set of verses is basically talking about to be reborn of the spirit is and that's a that is to be a noble birth that comes from the spirit of the king of kings the lord of lords so being on william street and taking a different route this time represented to me being born reborn of the spirit so i take my inheritance and i i walk the opposite direction as I'm reborn with the spirit. I walked with the spirit. The spirit was already with me. That was Ruth Street. I received from my inheritance and then I took another route revealing my, that represented me being reborn of the spirit as I took a different route than I did again in that other message where this cycle of streets is a little different. So, and that's what that meant. Uh, Now I'm going to read from Ephesians 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. And this is coming from the New Century Version translation. 
um, the Holy Spirit led me to want to read exactly from that translation to give the best understanding to the eyes and that will see and the ears that will hear this message. Amen. So it reads Ephesians 1 and 14. That Holy Spirit is the guarantee. It's the guarantee that we will receive what God uh, promised for his people until God gives full freedom to those who are his to bring praise to God's glory. So the Holy Spirit at that point, walking from Ruth Street, receiving the Holy Spirit only represents a deposit. It's the guarantee of the, it's the guarantee that we will receive what God has promised for his people until he gives full freedom. So just because we receive the Holy Spirit does not mean we have received full freedom. I walked on the street of Ruth with other faithful companions and with the faithful companion in the other dream, but I was taking a different route. I was learning with the Lord. Um, so that's what that portion of coming from Ruth Street meant. I was with the faithful companion and I had not received full freedom. The freedom comes when you are reborn of the Holy Spirit after you've been trained. Um, so, uh, to God's approval, you train to God's approval, not encouraged through somebody else to step out before the Lord has done his work. It does not mean that the Lord cannot, cannot and will not use you before then, because a good, I'm a truly to share my part of my testimony. That's going to be part of the training is your interaction and what he calls you to do while once you receive of the Holy Spirit. But we have not been set free just because we received the Holy Spirit. So and it's I had to grow in my maturation of understanding what the Holy Spirit was, who the Holy Spirit is and what how and what God was leading me to and just growing in the, in the perfection of that as it's still a working process now. But I'm just at another level of maturation as I of knowing the Holy Spirit and understanding what the Lord desires of me. Not perfect, but I'm more mature. That's how I was able to confidently say in the beginning of the video that I walk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, um, and I'll, again, I'll still release the message about how the Lord uh, speaks to me through the Holy Spirit because I haven't heard anybody else in ministry actually reveal that they this is how the Holy Spirit speaks to them. But um, I don't believe that I will be the only one and maybe somebody else already does and they are just not really sure that that's what it is. So next set of scriptures, you receive the Holy Spirit. The process of me being reborn of the Holy Spirit represented on me taking the route on William Street represented Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 15 through 17. And I'm reading this from the NIV. Um, the spirit, the Holy Spirit you received, received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. I did not fear the dogs, nor did I fear taking the, from my inheritance, the things on the aisle, on, on the corner in the, uh, at the address of 501. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, our father in heaven, we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit, the Holy Spirit himself testifies with our spirit, the spirit we are born with. That we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in this suffering, in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So the, the glory is being able, part of the glory is the maturation and understanding. This is the Holy Spirit talking to me. This is the Holy Spirit warning me. This is the Holy Spirit being with me at all times and understanding this communication that I have with the Holy Spirit. Um, Not to just... I've 
yeah, my experience with the Holy Spirit is is not necessarily this deep feeling that comes over me all the time, which if that's what some people say they feel, I don't know. I'm not them. I'm telling you, we are a body of Christ and we all have different gifts as well, but the gifts are given without repentance. The Holy Spirit is just a deposit, um, a guarantee of what will that we have to grow into the full freedom of in Christ. So with that process happening, Ephesians 1 and 14, the Holy Spirit testified to me that I was adopted into the sonship of God. That's what all of that process of me going from taking from my inheritance and going the opposite direction on William Street. That's what all of this represented. The Holy Spirit testified to my spirit. The Lord hasn't called me to necessarily reveal how that process went exactly, but that already happened. This is just how it was being shared in the dream to help you maybe understand the Holy Spirit will actually testify to your spirit. You are of you are a child of God. You have entered into this process, the adoption process. It says again, Ephesians 1 and 14, God gives until God gives full freedom. So it's a process. It's not just receiving the Holy Spirit and then claiming the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's a process. All right. So the next portion that I'm going to read from is uh, the inheritance. It said Proverbs 13 and 22. I was taking from the corner the, the, my inheritance, the items on the corner. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of a sinner is stored up for the righteous. Um, Ephesians 1 and 1 all the way down through what? Uh, Ephesians tw uh, 1 and 12. These scripture, set of scriptures basically edifies that meaning. The scripture of Proverbs 13 and 22 says and reads a man does these things, but God's word is eternal. So what we see here and what I, the Lord allowed me to understand is this thing begins with God. That whole process of receiving a good inheritance is from God It's reflected through God. So how does that look? Ephesians one and one says apostle of uh, it's beginning of the, the, the letter to the church of Ephesians, the people of Ephesians, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus. Uh, that's actually where the, the letter was in and the reading was going to Ephesus, not exactly Ephesians, uh, the church of Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So this also gives us some hints at what are a part of these people who have received in this inheritance um the saints and faithful you don't get to romans 8 and 15 through 17 without being faithful through that process you can become a saint uh, by god's approval so um all of this says jesus christ by the will of god ephesians uh 1 and 2 Grace and peace from God are received through Christ. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 5. Who hath predestined us to be adopted through Christ Jesus in himself according to the good pleasure of his will his good and perfect will ephesians 1 and 12 that we which first trusted in christ so this entire process of being able to receive that inheritance on the corner after walking and even re receiving the holy spirit who's advocating on our behalf he says that i will tell the father that he will send another advocate he will send an advocate in his name that's jesus christ that's literally his words in the bible i paraphrase that but the verses in john 14 that i read from um came were words from christ jesus in the flesh 
so the inheritance that we receive, the Holy Spirit, is the first part of the inheritance, the guarantee. That's in the part of the inheritance. We want that guarantee first. That is what we need first. Not anything physical riches. If you desire to be a believer in the Lord, that's what I reference this in another uh, message. We want the Holy Spirit as a believer. You want the Holy Spirit to be your first inheritance. As you are studying the word, as you are seeking the will of the Lord, you want the Holy Spirit to be your first inheritance. That doesn't mean your walk and your journey is complete and that you understand everything you need to know, but you want that inheritance first. After that inheritance, we grow and mature. We are faithful in the Lord. This leads to receiving more from the Lord. So the, the inheritance that's laid up for the righteous that are from the wicked, that is again reflected in from God. So the way that we receive in it's it said laid up for the children's children. If God is, excuse me, if Jesus is God's son, the son of man, the son of God, uh, he gave John, excuse me, Matthew three and wait, no, John three sixteen that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. God gave his son, that's his, his child, that those who believe shall be adopted into him by his good and perfect will. That means we become his children as Romans. I spoke of in Romans and I just spoke of in Ephesians. His children's children, basically other translations say grandchildren. That inheritance reflected is reflected through God before it's reflected through man. Because we know that God is not a man that he should lie. That's scripture, but he's literally not a man. So we can't put try to put him in the box of man. We are just created in his image. The closest thing to that was Christ. And we become co-heirs co in God through Christ. So without coming through the testimony of Christ and how Christ is the way to God, the Father, as scripture also says, you will not be able to get where the Lord desires. It's not where I desire. That's what I'm here to spread this message for. If you don't come through Christ, there is no receiving in that inheritance. Not the, the true inheritance, the eternal inheritance. I, I was picking up tangible items in the dream, but those things represented different things according to the inheritance from God. Um, but again, children's children, this is just a representation of children's children. From God, his son, Christ, we come behind Christ, coming through him. We are technically children's children to receive that inheritance. All right. Um... And what is the goal of all of this? Okay, next I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Uh, and this is basically about the... This is speaking... This passage is about John the Baptist. And his ministry became... His ministry came before Christ Jesus did. Before Christ... G, the ministry from Christ Jesus and his ministry basically was the what they call the forerunner or came before Christ that made he made the way for the coming of the ministry of Christ as Christ said uh, and even well John the Baptist said I baptize with water but there will be one that comes behind me uh, greater than me that will baptize with the Holy Spirit so the ministry of John the Baptist was giving us a, a a preview of what God desires for us through Christ Jesus. Let's find that set of scripture. So maybe I paraphrase that. So I'm not going to read the scripture because I don't have it set up just yet. But that's basically what it's talking about. Uh, the ministry of John the Baptist was basically telling us to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and we see that the ministry of Christ repeats that same thing to his disciples over and over and over again Jesus Christ was here in the flesh exalting the will of our father 
his father, our father in heaven. But we see that happening in the ministry of John the Baptist first. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now I'm going to read from Mark chapter 10 verse 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Children have to be taught and raised in the way that they should go, that they may never depart it. That's in the scripture. So we teach our children in the way to go in the world, but we also, we shouldn't be wanting to do that. That's why you need to, the, the word says to teach a child in the way they should go. Um, receiving the kingdom of God as a child, a child, we can make children in the, when we raise them in the darkness and the understanding of the world, that we can make them believe that uh, Santa Claus is real, that, that the Easter Bunny is real, that the Tooth Fairy is real. They will believe these things wholeheartedly in their heart that these beings and these that we created for them to believe in at that point in time in their age to to make them think that they are real. If you don't have that kind of faith in what the Lord tells you in his word and how his spirit leads you you will not be able to enter into his kingdom. So all of this comes together to say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. It's the guarantee of God's full promises until we receive the full promises, right? The completion of it. Uh, we want the Holy Spirit to testify to our spirit that we have been adopted into the sonship. We are considered in the kingdom of God. We are of his children you can't just claim it a lot of people claim that but they the holy spirit has not testified to their spirit aside from even having the fruit of that there's a process to this then the reborn process you can claim whatever you want it has nothing to do with race and all of that it has to come all of the things that are happening is spiritual now that's why there's a new covenant it all comes through christ if you if reject the testimony of Christ, you are rejecting everything that's going to be coming from God because it's coming through Christ. It's the, the inheritance is left to the children's children. He sent his only begotten son. It comes through him. That makes us children of, by way of his son, who is his child. You get it? So children's children. Without the faith of a child to wholeheartedly believe in things that they believe in that will lead them to hell, you have to have the kind of faith to believe in the goodness of God and the, the, the truth of God. That's what we all have to believe in order to get to that place of being reborn again. Nicodemus didn't understand being reborn of the spirit. So you, you have to have faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Some things you may not be able to see, but did, what did God, what does his word tell you to believe? You have to reject what the world has said and replace it with what his word says. Everything in the world comes through the lens of what the Bible says first. You, and you'll grow in that too, but this is where you want your heart and your mind to be at, right? So, uh, the faith of a child, otherwise you, you won't be able to receive a mustard seed of faith is what the word says we have to have, at least. Um, next, I am going to go to, and this is receipt, being becoming of his kingdom is a part of the consecration process, but I'll get into more of consecration. Consecration, consecration uh, as we go along in the message. But yeah, you have to be just the same way a, a child that hasn't learned to walk yet doesn't know that they can't crawl off the bed they just hold, they will wholeheartedly keep crawling until they fall on the floor, not understanding what's about to come. We do not want to have, be ignorant. That's what his knowledge and his wisdom is for. And his Holy Spirit helps us with, but they have that much under like boldness to just be like, all right, that's what God said. I know God said it. Well, that's not what the children have, but they have the, the faith of a child, basically. The understanding that I need to be committed to God's word the same way a child can be committed to walking um, the wrong way. It's strong faith, not ignorance. We, we perish for a lack of knowledge. We don't want that. But you need to have a strong faith in order to even begin to 
get to the process of what I was doing in that dream and what it represents for those in the body of Christ who desire to be of his kingdom. The ministry that came before Christ uh, was John the Baptist. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's available to all of us. That's God's desire. It was it was brought up before Christ. It was it was in the ministry of Christ. Become a part of his kingdom. He will testify by his spirit to our spirit that we are his. It's a process. Um so again, we know that Pro Proverbs 13 and 22 is a reflection of the eternal inheritance from God, even though the scripture says a good man. Uh, we learn in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus is exalting the will of the father. Jesus says to the man, said to him, why do you call me good? No one except God is good. No one except God alone is good. We know that Christ Jesus was good. He was born of the Holy Spirit, but he was there in that moment to exalt the will of the Father. He was only made good because God is good. We can only be made righteous through God, from God through Christ. We, are, we become of his righteousness. We become of his spirit as it walks with us in our spirit is communic is testify is his Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit and we are becoming consecrated to his spirit. So again, it's the exalting of the will of God. Jesus Christ was good, but he wasn't going to say that in the moment. Um, he is good, but he was saying that to exalt the will of the father, like, no, anything that you know of me to be good is because the father is good become of his spirit born of his spirit jesus christ was birthed of his spirit we have to be reborn of his spirit because we are not brought into this world born by the holy spirit that's why we have bloodlines and families and mothers and you know jesus had a physical bloodline too but he was birthed of the holy spirit he was brought into this world by the holy spirit all right so uh next we're going to go to Again, just piggybacking on Proverbs 30, 13 and 22. God is good. Christ Jesus was and is good as the son of God, born of the Holy Spirit. We are called to receive and believe in the son to receive the goodness of God that sinners or wicked temporarily or permanently forfeit and rebuke this inheritance from God. The earth and its fullness belong to God. His instructions, his knowledge, his wisdom are more precious than physical silver, gold, and rubies in any earthly treasure. Treasure That's coming from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 10 through 11. The flow of that glorious inheritance truly begins when the spirit of wisdom and revelation through the knowledge of God is given to his saints who are righteous along with the exceeding greatness of his power. Toward his righteous. And that last part is coming from Ephesians chapter one, verses 17 through 18. So it says that Proverbs 13 and 22, the, the, this, the wealth is stored up for the righteous, but it's from the wicked. These things are available to those who are considered wicked or sinners, but because they reject them temporarily, because we are we, when we walked in the world, we didn't know that we had this glorious inheritance um, and these provisions and this knowledge and this wisdom from God. Because we're ignorant of this, we're living in sin. We're prodigals like the prodigal son the goodness of our inheritance the goodness of god is is laid up for people who become righteous who are made righteous in christ so as they when you as you become righteous in god through christ this inheritance becomes your portion it becomes our portion that's what that represented as well um 
his earthly riches are these is his wisdom and his understanding and his knowledge are worth more than any earthly riches. That's scripture. So again, it's just that's what the scripture means. Proverbs 13 and 22. The things that are laid up for the righteous are basically things that are available to the wicked, but they reject them temporarily because we don't know God and then we come to God through Christ or we reject God and say we're not we never going to believe in Christ Jesus then the inheritance that I speak of here the beginning of that inheritance through the Holy Spirit it doesn't happen you rejected your inheritance so it's laid up for the righteous um I reference being the saints called righteous coming from Ephesians 1 um verses 17 through 18 we learn that a saint is someone who is sanctified in Christ. They are faithful. They keep, who keep his commandments of God. Their faith is in Jesus. That's and you can reference the scriptures of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1, Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. I know some people usually I I well yeah if someone considers themselves a saint, you can consider yourself a saint too, but there's no need to feel some kind of way because they acknowledge who God tells them who they are. But just because they acknowledge it, it's going to, the fruit are going to be there. So just because someone acknowledges themselves as a saint does not necessarily mean that God has considered them a saint to be of his righteous. The fruit will be there. The fruit will be there and it's not somewhere that you don't have access to, but already coveting or feeling disappointed that you are not at that maturation in Christ to receive that title or to, of God testifying that to you is nothing. Everybody's at different levels, different levels. So uh, now I'm going to jump to uh, number point four, uh, five. Okay, since we are adopted into the sainthood, Romans 8 and, and 16, um, we are adopted into the sainthood or in the sonship of God because we are, okay, I already spoke on that. So it's an adoption process, a spiritual adoption process, right? So one of the things that is a part of this inheritance that we receive from God is grace. The rich grace of God is also at, is also added unto his righteous even more as the calling and the righteousness of God are received. I reference this again in the video titled God Rebukes the King James Version um, translation, whatever you want to have I put it, the Bible, um, that version of the Bible. Once you are sure in being led into the calling that God has for you. As you are seeking him, there's an additional grace that's added unto you to per, to fulfill that calling. That's why you want to be sure about the calling. It, the, the calling doesn't mean the amount of time. There's nothing. It depends. God knows what your calling is and the amount of time needed to fulfill it based on the foundation in the, with your foundation being Christ before you go pursue that calling is 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 really important but to truly know that you are of his kingdom and of his calling but the only way you're going to be sure of your calling is from god that's why i will encourage you in the lord i won't encourage you in your gift your gift you we i we i had the gift of dream before i became before i came to christ um and any other gift came before i came to christ i had it before i came to christ it does I could keep that gift and not serve God at all or know God. So there's a certain path and things that he wants us to know that are rooted in Christ to fulfill the calling and a, a, an additional amount of grace is added unto us with the understanding and leading of the calling that God has for us and his, his righteousness is added unto us too. These things, again, are available to sinners, but they refuse to repent 
and faithfully seek and obey the will of God in the fullness of his instructions. This leaves all the imperishable riches to be laid up for the righteous of God. They could have extra grace. They could have wisdom and knowledge and understanding and insight of things that only God is going to reveal to those he deems righteous. But because they are rejecting the true path and repenting from things that are not of God, that means turning away. You know what? I like what you're saying about the Bible, but that don't really sound like the gospel. That don't sound like the pure gospel. Either you're going to believe it and start to act out in play into what they're saying and take that a part of the gospel and if it isn't a part of the gospel now you're becoming defiled with that defiled understanding but if you find out that it's not right it's not true that's not what god wanted you to understand about what they're preaching about his gospel that's not his true interpretation that means to repent you know what i'm going to turn from that i'm not going to walk in that path i'm not going to believe that that to be true in my heart and actually act on your your understanding of what it is that's why the holy spirit will have to lead you and guide you into saying you know what this is god's approval god approves that god approved of me releasing the message that the geneva bible and god's word translations are of his approval to be that we can learn from them and receive the understanding and closer to the understanding that he desires for us to understand uh, from him basically so, um, the rich amount of grace that, uh, you can see that, that is also referenced in Ephesians verses chapter one, verses one, chapter one, verses 17 through 18 and Ephesians chapter two, verse seven. So again, uh, the, the true, the truth of the source of Proverbs 13 and 22 begins with God and it, and is a spiritual, it's spiritual and eternal before anything else. Um, so they'll think those things that I had on the corner and walked with and stored them up, those represented spiritual provisions as well as they could represent physical provision. Now I'm going to jump to Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And this is... Um, Jesus basically saying, I'm going to skip to the part where he says, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions, which I don't know if those were the exact words of Jesus, but this might be Luke describing his encounter from with uh, describing the encounter from one of the apostles from Jesus. So it's more like secondhand because I don't uh, don't quote me on that, but I don't think Luke Luke didn't walk with Christ. He walked with Paul. We're not going to get into that, though. That's something you could argue about that doesn't matter <laughs> about receiving his internal kingdom. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm just getting a little bit off, off topic. So you can read further into Luke 12 and 21 to read more about relying on or having faith in physical riches among other scriptures, because if you do have that faith in physical riches, um, you'll see where, where that'll lead you. Um, the, the, the things, the things of the sinners, the inheritance is laid up for the righteous, not for the wicked. And that's what those people in the street represented. The inheritance was available to them but they were still living in sin and being led the wrong way. How were they being living? How were they still essentially living in a sin? Uh, not, not according to God's grace. They were listening and receiving a gospel from that preacher who was represented a false gospel. She could see me receiving my inheritance. She didn't point them to that direction. She was not even leading them closer to getting to that inheritance. Um, they were just listening to her. They could not see me. They never even looked at me. They only kept their eyes on this, this woman preaching, but they never got closer to their inheritance throughout that entire dream. So the wealth that was available to them 
was stored up for those who God deemed righteous. And that's what I represented walking through and just from the walking from Rue Street with the faithful companion to grab from this pile of items, this at the address of 501, which is significant um, on the corner of being a diligent servant and the corner of a resolute protector and a noble spirit coming together to receive the items of my uh, for of inheritance that were laid up for me because the, the the spirit led me to these things i was obedient to this the leading of the spirit and a diligent servant and a teachable spirit to be led to the resolute protector and the noble spirit that i may be reborn of the spirit that the spirit will testify to my spirit that I am a child of God and adopted into his sonship, that I will take a different direction after receiving my inheritance, the beginning of receiving my inheritance, because the Holy Spirit is just a guarantee of the full promise. It's not the entire promise, but the promises comes through the, the power of the Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit. The next steps that we want to get to is the consecration of the Holy Spirit, that we consecrate ourselves to God, that our spirit becomes to reflect his Holy Spirit as we are already being testified to by his Holy Spirit that basically God has approved and said, hey, you are my child in the spirit. We have received as a, an inheritance that has been left for the children's children from God through his child, Jesus Christ, his son, given to us the children's children because we come through Christ to receive the inheritance that makes us co-heirs with God, uh, excuse me, with Christ in God, uh, with God in Christ. So co-heirs with Christ. If you just want to go back over that scripture of Romans eight, chapter 15, Romans chapter eight, verse 15 through 17. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video right here. I said it's a series. So digest all of that and really come together and thinking and commit to how faithful am I as, as a saint and becoming a saint? Have I received the Holy Spirit? Um, my receiving of the Holy Spirit, what, did, what is the Holy Spirit trying to tell me? Am I reading the word? Because it, it just can't be spirit. The word, the, the spirit comes from the, the the Holy Spirit additionally being added unto us and additional leading, we have to get in the word and know it for ourselves. The foundation of our hearts and our mind, we want to be the living word. That foundation is Christ, the testimony of Jesus. That's Old Testament, New Testament. That's his word will be its completion of the word. We understand the new covenant, but uh, that's the one that we are under. So that doesn't mean just read the New Testament, but receiving this inheritance is going to be you're going to have to be in the word for yourself and you can gather with other saints you can be of a church home but if you're being led by a gospel that is not christ you're being fed a gospel that is not truly what christ wants and you're believing it and eating of it and taking it in you may be sitting in the middle of being a diligent servant headed no closer to your inheritance so it, the, the provision of your inheritance is spiritual and it's eternal and it could also be practical and physical and tangible things, but it all comes from God and flows through Christ. So if you reject Christ as a sinner, as somebody that just will not believe, then you are essentially you're rejecting your eternal, eternal inheritance from God. That also leads to your inheritance on earth. I personally don't want my inheritance on earth without my inheritance in heaven, the receiving of the kingdom of God. We receive the kingdom of God while, while we are on the earth. Repent, turn away from what is not of God and what is sin and evil in his eyes, that we may receive the kingdom of heaven while we still walk the earth. You receive it, We you des your desire, you should desire to receive it. It's at hand while we're on earth. So yeah, with that being said, just if this is new to you, this is what the Lord is having me deliver. If you want to get to where the God, where God is calling any and everybody who believes on his son to
to be co-heirs with Christ. This is that process. And again, you probably want to go back and watch that last video because there's a process that comes before this. But this is the process where you truly be your this is revealing to be reborn of the Holy Spirit. And not just sitting, listening to a, someone operating falsely within the fivefold, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. Um, I'm forgetting one of them, but that's what the preacher in the middle of the street represented so i'll leave you with this and i will see you next time in the next video uh god bless you shalom